ready, I'm willing, and now I'm able. Cause I hooked up 27 miles of cable. It's time for me to get on my soapbox. Gonna kick it. Greetings, believers and non believers. This is Rabbit Ape. So there's something I've kind of been wondering about, and I want to ask everyone out here a couple questions because I'm pretty curious about what all you wonderful, smart people think. Um, these are kind of complicated, open-ended questions, so I'm going to ramble on for a little bit just so you can kind of see where I'm coming from, and then I'm going to try to pose some specific questions. I hope they make sense, and then, of course, invite some comments and video responses. So, okay, here's where I'm coming from. Um, I've kind of talked about a little bit in some of my other videos about the different ways that humanity can end itself. I want to kind of zoom out a little bit, and uh, not, let's not talk about just humanity, but um, just as examples of that, you know, if we have like a nuclear war, that's probably going to end us as a species, potentially end us as a species, definitely slow us down and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, cockroaches, bacteria, stuff like that, those are going to live on. You know, a lot of different time, uh, different ways when people talk about, oh, we're going to destroy the planet, the planet is going to be just fine. You know, it's pretty much spinning around the sun. We might fuck it up. We might fuck it up for us, but, you know, the planet is going to be okay. And in a lot of ways, life is going to go on. So kind of what I'm worried about is that, you know, not only might humanity and itself as a species, you know, but, you know, even if we do that, there's still going to be bacteria that live on and, you know, cockroaches, you know, for all we know, there, there could be uh, an evolved race of insects that takes over the world after we destroy ourselves. And, you know, and, and really, I guess that's kind of cool, you know, life goes on. And uh, that's really where I'm coming from here. What I'm worried about is that, you know, maybe something like a supernova going off nearby in the galaxy um, per puts an end to all life on Earth, you know, something that freaking, you know, if the whole fucking planet gets destroyed, obviously, there's, you know, there's nothing for life to exist on. So, um, here's where, you know, kind of where I'm coming from. Um, a lot of times people pose the idea that life on Earth started via panspermia, which is basically um, the idea that simple life forms came to Earth from elsewhere, perhaps on a meteor or something like that, and, you know, then commenced evolution once they got here, which explains how life started on this planet, but not how the life itself started. You know, it's, it's not the ultimate answer to the question. Um, but, you know, that kind of gives me the idea, um, what's to stop us from doing something like that ourselves? You know, we're fortunate enough to, to be alive here right now, and we have the ability to, you know, e e even if it's, it's completely in, not feasible for human beings themselves to go, you know, inter, inter, even interplanetary distances, let alone interstellar or intergalactic distances, I'm pretty sure for a relatively low cost, we could put together something that, you know, you could house some bacteria and maybe even, you know, plants and fish eggs and fungi spores and all this kind of stuff. And then have maybe something that's automated that goes through the cosmos looking for the, you know, the right candidate of star. Once it gets to the star, looks for a planet with the right conditions, and once it finds them, goes down and boom, you know, starts seeding this life on that planet. And um, e even if intelligent life, even if humans can't travel these, these vast distances through space, we can at least send life out. And that just freaking blows my mind, you know. I don't see what's to stop us from doing that. You know, so we send our bacteria pod off and it goes and crash lands on some planet around some other star a few, a few light years away. It doesn't even have to be that far. And, you know, a couple million, couple billion years go by and life emerges on that planet and they begin to understand the process of evolution. They'd be able to trace it back up to the point where life began, but once it got to there, they wouldn't know. They'd be in the same position as us. Um, it's, it's, it really went, when I think about that, you know, like right now we can do that, and I think it almost goes to show, I'm not sure, maybe, I really don't know, someone, you know, please tell me in the grand timeline of the universe, is there time for, um, you know, the universe to form, star, planet, etc., life, intelligent life, send something out, 
you know, is there time for that to happen before us? Or, you know, maybe we would be the first ones, uh, you know, if we are the first ones to be able to do that. And for all we know, maybe we're, you know, <laughs> we're the only ones in the neighborhood. Um, I almost think we're obligated. And that's kind of what I want to ask about. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, you know, this, this idea of human-induced panspermia. Here, here are some of the questions, I guess, that I want to, you know, see if you guys can answer because I just, you know, I want to see where people come from. Honestly, there's there's been plenty of times, you know, I come across maybe as a little bit arrogant and seem like, you know, I know what I'm talking about and I know where I'm coming from. But um, there's been plenty of times, you know, from people that I like and that I don't like where sometimes, you know, in the right context and sometimes even just the, you know, the smallest little idea or comment can shift my frame of thinking and kind of make me go, mm, you, you know, and then my thinking and my beliefs evolve and, you know, that's freaking great. That's what I love about this. So um, here are the questions, I guess. Um, so this idea of human-induced panspermia, number one, um, can we do it? You know, how, you know, I, I, it seems to me that it wouldn't be that hard. You know, load a couple cryogenic things up, you know, if you use simple life forms, shouldn't be that hard to preserve them boom, send them off, um, you know, preferably, you know, nice little divided things to where they can get somewhere, and whenever they find a planet, spread in lots of places all over the planet, and, um, you know, you just send lots and lots of those to where you've got thousands of little disperser bots, you know, on like the mothership, and the mothership finds a star, and, you know, there you go. So, you know, I think we can do it, but what do you guys think? So, number one, can we do it? Uh, number two, should we do it? You know, um, there. You know, I can totally see there's some arguments why maybe that would be a bad thing. You know, it's contaminating other worlds. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Personally, I'm coming from the perspective that life itself and the ability to um, process information is is justifies itself. Um, you know, a, a, a universe without any observers, I don't really see the point. So. Um, I, I think it would be interesting at least and perhaps even morally justified for us to do this. But again, you know, I want to see what you guys think out there. Um, so can we, should we, um, yeah, I guess that's really it, you know. Yeah. Human-induced panspermia. Um, human beings actively fertilizing life on other worlds. Can we do it? Should we do it? and why. Let me know what you think. Rabbit Ape out.